Hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining. This is uh, Test Driven Development with PHP Spec for the 2015 uh, Advent of Code Day 1 Puzzle 1. Uh, so the idea here is we've got a series of instructions for an elevator in a big apartment building. Open prints means we're going to go up a floor, closed prints means we're going down a floor, and uh, our input is going to be a huge amount of uh, parentheses open and close and we have to figure out what floor we end up on after pressing up and down uh, this many times so rather than use regular expressions or uh, counting opens and closes uh, I want to do this building an elevator simulator so the elevator is going to be able to go up and down and keep track of that so in PHP spec uh, the first thing we want to do is describe the class that we're building. So in this case it's going to be day one and it's going to be an elevator. And when we run PHP spec after creating that first initial spec, it's going to offer to create that class for us. And so we've now got a spec directory, we've got a source directory, and the elevator is created. It's just an empty class and our spec where we put our new tests is going to go in there. So uh, beyond existing, which is all this is initializable does, we want to make sure it has some behavior. So the first behavior uh, I want to make sure it has is that it should be on uh, on ground floor on zero uh, when it starts. So we're going to call a test. It should be on zero when it starts. We'll say this get floor should be zero and that is as simple as that. So we've got a get floor. It says we can create it. It does that automatically for us. And inside of the elevator, we've got this empty get floor. So in order to make this pass uh, very quickly, we'll do a return zero. We'll run again, and now everybody's happy, uh, except for we've got an elevator that doesn't go up or down. So we need to now make it so it can go up and down. So we'll do uh, it can go up, and we'll say this go up. And we'll do this get floor should be one. And we'll run it. And it says you don't have go up. We'll create it and it fails. And now back in the elevator class, we've got this go up. So I now want to make a, a, a bit of state in our elevator to make sure we know where everything is. So we'll make a private floor variable. And we'll tell get floor that it should return the floor. And we'll make go up, uh, increment the floor. Uh, now when I run it, it's going to fail again. And the reason why is I've changed the behavior. So my, uh, my go up is actually working, but my starting on zero is failing, and that's because I changed that behavior. So if I initialize it with zero, we should be back to everything working again, and we are. Um, so this is the nice part with writing these, uh, with unit tests or PHP spec or any of this stuff, is that we've got kind of a safety net uh, if we mess up something. So uh, it's a huge benefit. So our next bit is uh, it can go down. And we'll say this go down. Um, and in, in PHP spec, when we write this, uh, it's, it's PHP spec, but it's also a wrapper uh, around the class that we're creating. So we can call these methods that don't exist, but it's as though we're in the elevator itself, even though we're not actually in the elevator, which is uh, kind of neat, but it does look a little bit weird. So we'll say uh, we go down and then get floor. And in this case, uh, it should be a negative one since we're in the basement. And we'll run it, and it will create go down for us. And we'll go back to the elevator, and we'll decrement. And now we have an elevator that can go up and down. Uh, now, if we wanted to at this point, uh, we can create more tests to say, hey, if I go up three times and down four times, uh, what happens, or, or am I on the right floor in every case? Um, however, the code is pretty simple. Uh, so I don't think that that's strictly necessary, uh, but uh, I also don't think that if we go back to the 
problem here and say, okay, here's our input. I don't think the elevator needs to know about parentheses. So I'm going to make a parser that allows uh, something else to determine that open print is up and close print is down and control the elevator from that. So let's describe another class. We'll do a PHP spec describe day one uh, and we'll call it instruction parser. And the idea behind the instruction parser is that it should um, take a list of parentheses and uh, call the elevator uh, uh, and make it go up or down as appropriate. So we told it to create the class. Now our class should exist. Uh, we'll close out everything else except for the two bits that we're working on. So the instruction parser spec and the instruction parser. So we've now got our instruction parser spec and we want to make sure that uh, it is built using an elevator. So we're going to inject the elevator. We're going to build the elevator outside and inject it. So um, if you're used to uh, PHP unit, there's a setup method in PHP unit that runs before every test. In this case, we've got a, uh, a let function that runs before every test. And we want to tell it uh, that our, uh, our elevator instruction parser should be built with uh, an elevator being injected into it. So when we run this, it's going to offer to create the constructor for us, and we'll let it do that. Uh, notice it's passing already. There's not really a lot we can do to test that uh, unless we build uh, getters to say, hey, we put this thing in, we get the same thing out. So I'm going to go ahead and type hint on elevator. I don't want it to take anything else right now. And we'll call it elevator. And we'll tell PHP unit to go ahead and build uh, the private variable for us and initialize it. And if we run it, everything's happy again. Uh, if I took this out right now, then uh, when it ran, it would actually fail because it's not passing in the things that it needs for the constructor. So uh, first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that if we pass in parentheses, uh, open parentheses, then the elevator is going to be called and told to go up. Uh, so we'll say it will go up for open paren. And uh, we want to pass in the elevator here because we need to tell the elevator that it should be expecting to get uh, an up button push. We're not using a real elevator, we're using a, a double, a, a, a test double. So the elevator itself, uh, we can test things about it that things were called, but it's not actually, uh, we don't actually care about the elevator here. We're not testing the elevator, we're testing the instruction parser. So. Uh, the elevator that comes in here is, is not real. Uh, with that being said, we're going to give it some expectations. So we're going to say the elevator uh, go up method should be called. And we'll do uh, this uh, parse instructions. And we'll pass in a single open parenthesis. So, uh, what's happening is we say, okay, the elevator, which is fake, should have this go up method called, uh, and then we're going to call this parse instruction with an open parenthesis, and somehow from that, the elevator is going to be called. Uh, so it doesn't have parse instructions, we'll create it, and now it fails. It says we've failed our predictions. No calls were made on the elevator that uh, for go up, but we expected at least one. So. Uh, simplest one again, kind of similar to the return zero, is we can just do this elevator go up and we'll run and it says everything's green and fine and happy, um, but that's only for an elevator that can only go up and it's only for a single instruction current. Actually, it doesn't even matter. We can say up or down or whatever else, it doesn't matter. We're going to go up. Uh, so we want to say it will go down for close per in and we'll pass in the elevator so we can give it some expectations this time though we're going to use it uh, we're going to give it expectations after the fact so um, rather than say this is what you should expect we're going to check afterwards and say uh, this is what should have happened 
um, so which is slightly different, but uh, still valid. So we'll say this parse instructions close friend and after the fact we'll say hey elevator the go down um, and now it's a slightly different method but it should have been called then with two E's should have been called and we'll run it and it says it was not called so we need to uh, probably put a conditional in here so we're going to say let's change this to something uh, more meaningful we'll say instructions and uh, if instructions is an open paren then we call go up and if instructions we'll go ahead and do an else if we only have two instructions so else if instructions is a close paren and then we'll call elevator go down and we'll run our test and it says everything's great um, so now we have uh, a parser that can parse single instructions but we want it to be able to parse uh, big sets of instructions so we'll do another test we'll say uh, it can I don't know, it can use multiple parens to control elevator. So we'll do um, this parse instructions. So let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six opens and one, two, three, close. So I'll say elevator. Oh, I need to pass in the elevator because we want expectations on that. Uh, and I'm going to do it uh, in both ways now. So we'll say the, um, we'll do the this, or not this, elevator go up should be called six times and elevator go down should have been called times three. So that fails because we're only dealing with uh, a single character and it didn't match any of that. So if we change our method now, uh, we can split out our instructions, which I misnamed. Let me rename that real quick. And we'll split it out. So we'll say, we'll, we're, we're going to loop over it, say a for each of uh, stir split for instructions as dollar char for character and we'll move this set of code inside of that loop so it can call it over and over uh, except for we're not using instructions anymore we'll use a char and char now we could obviously switch this to a switch statement or anything else but uh, we'll leave it alone for right now so go down was not expected go up uh, was expected so uh, apparently we can't use both methods uh, so let's go ahead and put this one up front and we'll say should be called times and run it again and everything is happy so now we've got our uh, parser works with multiple instructions. It calls up and down the pr uh, appropriate number of times. So the last bit that we need to do is kind of combine these things. Uh, and I've got the little test runner or the, the program runner that I created that will take uh, a class named Puzzle 1 inside of our Day 1 or Puzzle 2, whatever it may be, and run it uh, using its invoke so we can set all of that up in there. So We'll do php spec describe 
uh, day one, puzzle one, and we'll run it and create it. Um, and in this case, I'm going to go ahead, uh, since it is kind of ridiculously simple, and just make the function. So we've been, we're going to have some input, and we'll say instructions is file get input or file get contents, which will give us a string, and it's going to come from uh, somewhere. I need to go and put this input in a place. So let's make a new directory. You know what? Let's do it inside. No, we're going to do it right there. Do input. Make a new directory, day one, and we we'll grab our input. Make a new file, we'll call it input.txt, and we'll paste it. So we've got this huge line of parentheses, so we'll save it and close it because we don't need to see it anymore. Uh, but it's going to be up two levels inside of input day one input.txt. So now we've got our input uh, and we need to create an elevator. So we'll make elevator is new elevator and parser is a new uh, instruction parser. And it needs an elevator, so we'll pass in the elevator we just created. And now parser is going to parse our instructions. So we'll pass in the instructions, which was the contents of that file. And our final bit is, we want to see what floor did we get back to. So our final floor is going to be from the elevator, which is keeping track. And we'll do get floor, and make some nice new lines there. And now, if we've done everything correctly, we should be able to run day one, puzzle one, and we get a final floor of 280, which uh, for my input file uh, happens to be correct. So the puzzle answer was 280, so we got that one. Yours is probably going to be different because advent of code uh, looks like it creates uh, either random or semi-random inputs, or at least different people get different inputs uh, for their puzzle. So we've now got part two, uh, but I will save that for the next video. Thank you for joining.